to Sibling Screenings, where we discuss movies from our totally non-expert point of view. This week, we continue our countdown of the AFI Top 100 Films with 1942's Yankee Doodle Dandy. Excellent. The IMDb synopsis is as follows. The life of the renowned musical composer, playwright, actor, dancer, and singer George M. Cohan. Did you like that? Did you like that nice pronunciation? He only says it like 80 million times in the movie. <laughs> it's it's exactly. Cohan. It's Cohan. Exactly. I'm not going to make fun of him for that. I'm not, I am going to make fun of it. Because it's not really an accent. It's just being old timey. And a little Irish, I guess. Right. It's not his fault is what I'm trying to say. I think, I think it mean. is his fault. It's, it's a very... It's cruel. So have you seen this film before? Before this viewing? No. I would have no reason to. I have seen it before. Uh, and I don't. So it's better the second time? Well, so what's the first section of this podcast? It's have you seen it? Have you seen it? <laughs> no. No. Uh, so, and I didn't know anything about this film going in. I had not heard of this film. No, I haven't either. Uh, but, so when I heard what this movie was based on, George M. Cohan, and he wrote X number of songs. I haven't heard about him. I haven't heard about his songs. So really, I went into this blog. I mean, you've heard of Yankee Doodle Dandy. But not the one that he wrote. You've never heard that song? I'm, a, I'm Yankee. a Yankee doodle dan- You've never heard that nope, song? never. That's crazy. Why would I have heard it? Because you live in America. <laughs> I mean, right, what event would I hear this song? A 4th of July parade. A 7th grade band concert. I haven't heard it with lyrics, I guess. Maybe I've heard it instrumentally. Hmm. All right. Well, that is interesting. Now we cut to our favorite segment. Our favorite segment. Michael's Musical Corner. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I have a corner about the music. Yeah, you have a corner about the music. Can I just say, so I want to start because I was talking to our mother because we are brother and sister, so we have the same mother. Mm -hmm. Promise of the podcast. Yeah. Uh, So I was saying, oh, we have to watch this effing movie, Yankee Doodle Dandy, and and mom was like, oh, I love that movie. And I'm like, you do not love this movie. You are lying to me, and we'll get into why I was so mad about it. But um, And she's like, well, I love the music. And I'm like, I do not believe you. Okay, so our mother, she's like a cool, sophisticated lady. And I'm like, I don't believe that she needs to watch a two-hour film to listen to Grand Old Flag. Like, I don't believe her. I don't believe she's like, I need some 1910s big band in my life right now. I'm going to sign with mom. It's fine music. Okay. Yeah, it's not uh, not bad. It's all right. What I, and maybe this isn't belonging in my segment. I don't like the idea that this is categorized as a musical because all the musical numbers are just them doing their performances on stage. Does that not count as a musical? It, I mean, it does count, I guess, for many people. It just doesn't count for me personally. Okay. Because, it, yeah. I mean, in Mamma Mia, does it forward the story? It's just like, but you, you feel like because it's part of the like, reality part that they're the living world. in. And Abbott yeah. music is so good. So good. And, yeah. <laughs> and Pierce Brosnan. Like, Pierce please. Brosnan. So that officially is we a musical. We need some of that. Because it's got the Pierce, it is a musical. That's so, just how I categorize things. I'm actually going to take a left turn because I was like so incredulous that mom liked this music. And then, uh, spoiler for, but like we were just watching the end of it and I still have that over there song in my head. And I'm like, all right, this is a jaunty tune. <laughs> well, actually, it's a totally escaped my mind. Oh, over yeah. there. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. Don't cut that out. <laughs> um, you know, oh, gosh. Anyway. Um, so you don't, but you don't have any opinion about the music? Um, no, it's fine. It's lovely music. I'm not going to listen to it after this is over. I'm not going to put it on my iPod. If somebody is putting it on their iPod, what is the event? What is the reason someone needs a soundtrack? Uh, they have a perfectly acceptable reason. It's 4th of July. It's some sort of patriotic event. Hmm. It's fine. All right. That's fair. That was Michael's The Musical Corner. That was a bad segment. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love Wasn't it. very good. I w- I'll have better opinions next time. All right. Um, so let's let's talk about this movie. Um, okay. Initial reactions. Oof. A little, little long. A little long. You feel the length. I did not... I didn't like it. <laughs> no. no. Oh, that comes later. Well, Shit. You know, so... I mean, let's spoil it a little bit. We do have to watch these movies two at a time. And the other movie we saw was so bad, it didn't even have character. At least this has, like, a character with some kind of emotion. I don't I don't know if I am agree with you on that. I feel like no, none of these people are characters. Really? I even... Yeah. No, I actually do like our main character. I think he's kind of a dick. Oh, I mean, he's absolutely a dick. As a little kid, but then as and you grow up, at least... I mean, at least there's something there. As you can't ch- say he's not a character. Okay, 
but he just like he just exists in this world as this perfect patriarch guy who's also kind of a dick and hard to work with but nothing bad ever happens to him really <laughs> i mean so the problem isn't the character to me the problem is the story and that there sure, is none sure. so that's unfortunate right. uh let's do a little segment we call hottie count body count yeah uh body count one uh the dad i guess <laughs> what is body what's that mean you mean like Let's describe the segment for our new listeners and also me. <laughs> so body count is like just a common expression to like how many people died in a film. Oh, okay. Uh, how do so count? that's not an opinion piece. It is not. Okay. It's just a discussion about how violent the film is. <laughs> <laughs> this segment is how many people died and how many cute people are there. <laughs> that is exactly the segment. All right. We this, can, we now can, our new listeners are on. We can cut this segment out. No, if, everyone's on board now. I Me don't... and people listening. I like that. I just, I've heard this discussed like, oh, how, what was that film? What's the body count? Like, this is a thing I've heard. This is a term people use. How many use. people die? Are there like cute people? Okay. Hottie count, I thought was a funny little pun on a, a normal thing. No, it is. I'm not, no, I'm not yes anding you like I should be. But uh... <laughs> I did notice that. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. So body count one, dad, I guess. Dad. Probably other people because the whole film span well, like I'll leave years. it to you because this is an objective part of the segment. Right. Hottie counts. I mean. Mary was hot. Yeah, but like, okay. I feel like all the women were like beautiful, but like also looked like they were 70. I don't know. Just like how young people back then looked old to me. No, I see what you're saying. Like if you see a, a picture, a teenage picture of your grandmother, you're like, oh, she just looks like a grandmother. What if you saw a young person today in black and white? Would you maybe think they looked with a little that, older? With the hair and with, with the, the clothes. Hair. Probably. Yeah. Probably. I am um, deceived. George Cohan? Not hot. Uh, James Cagney? Not a hottie. Not a hottie. No. He is a, an odd looking man. And he doesn't... So this film, he's supposed to be from... He's playing the character of George Cohan from 17 to in his old age. He doesn't really pull off the young age. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Um, also, it's weird because he looks old the whole time, but then his old age makeup also sucks. So he's like bad at every age. <laughs> good at tap dancing. Yeah, right. really good at tap dancing. So you... Hottie Cow, so was it all the women? Yeah, all the women were really beautiful, I think. Uh, all right. Zero, all women. No, one, all women. That's... Yeah, all the women. That's the Zero of, of the men. Yep. Um, do you want to hang out with any of these people? Do I... Yeah. Yes. So I would want to hang out with George M. Cohan. Um, not because he's a fu he is a dick. He's an asshole. But I, I mean, I just you know I like oh, people with that kind of energy sure. just and with that kind of talent. For our listeners, so this whole film is just like the uh, synopsis said. It's just his life and. It starts with him as a kid in this vaudeville family, which, by the way, wouldn't it suck so bad if you grew up in show business and I assume get no education or anything? No. And you, what if you had no talent? Like, how much would that suck? <laughs> yeah. You're just... Yeah. Anyway. Um, it worked out for him. And then, and then he kind of gets a big head and then that's when his parents say, oh, we should probably beat him. And they're like, no, I don't really feel that like it. That is a scene in this movie. I and then, that. and then he gets jumped by a bunch of kids. Like he gets his ass kicked, and then his parents are like, well, good thing we didn't have to do it. This Thank God. Weird, this is a weird movie. <laughs> it's a weird movie. And then later in life, he's still got a big head. Like he didn't really learn his lesson by the massive child abuse. And then, yeah, yeah. and then he pushes this pretty girl who becomes his wife. Spoiler alert. He's like, go perform my song right now. And the manager's like, you can't just do that because this is you're a professional and then they all get fired and he's difficult to work with and then you know what happens you know what the conclusion is that he gets everything you want and he's wildly successful well so here's why i'm so objectable for you to say that there's no character because he is a strong character i feel like that is a good point That's i a... feel like he really is a if he, if george Ho cohan walked in this room you'd get an impression of how he would act and what he would say oh yeah by the way i'm sorry i have to go back because when we're just talking about the premise of this movie the very beginning is old George yeah and he's going to the White House which looks like the worst set you've ever seen and and he's and he is just meeting with FDR and it's 1942 so World War II is happening right now and FDR is just like have a seat he's, George, George is like great let me tell you a two hour story like you have nothing better to do so let's do this <laughs> Oh, you, you're complimenting me, President? Let me tell you about my childhood. Yeah, yeah. probably taking up too much of his time. Probably, probably. being a little too forward with that Got information. Word. Also, the actor who played FDR is the worst. Yeah, can I hear your FDR impression? Uh, hold on. 
Yeah, take your time. Oh man, World War II. I I can't walk very well. You're right. That that would be. Was bad. that good? Yeah. Was that? That was, that was really good. Uh, can Is I hear you? yours? <laughs> Let me hear your FDR. When I think of a day that's gray and lonely, I just stick up my chin and grin and say. That was a nice little Annie interlude for those non-musical fan listeners of ours. See, Annie's a real musical. <laughs> that is a real musical. You know what I mean? That's happening. That's um, not. Yeah. Oh, right. remember when blackface happens in this movie? Sure. Oh, I was thinking about that blackface, actually. <laughs> because it's not a sentence I say a lot for listeners who don't know me. Um, like, I was like, whoa, that's really bad. Because it's like just blackface, like really just the worst kind of blackface you can depict. But then I thought, you know, they were doing that as part of a show right. that they were doing for an audience. By the way, the scene had no business. It did not need to be in the movie. It was just a part of a montage of their shows. So it stuck out for many reasons. Right. But, um, so it wasn't depicting it to us like, hey, you'll enjoy this. It was a depicting it to an audience. So right. it's like, well, here's a window into what entertainment right. looked like back then. So it probably isn't t- so offensive, and maybe. If he's super old in 1942 and a child in the show, this is like 1880, 1890, right? So He was born in 1878. Whoa, good I look, fact. I looked that up. Okay. So, so I like, it is a product of the time. I get it. It was just very jarring. But do you know for... what I mean? It wasn't showing it to us. Like, right. that's not the appeal of the movie. I feel like I, can I, I'm going to push back a little on that because I feel like they thought it would be really fun for us to see these stage shows. Like, they spent so much time, like, doing these elaborate stage shows for the screen. I guess I agree with you because the tone of the movie was kind of like, jaunty and fun. And then they would do these like elaborate stage things that would look cool if you're like in a theater, but you're watching a movie. So it's like, <laughs> ooh, we're on a horse and there's a racetrack going by. And it's like, you could just do that. I, did, I didn't mind. I like that. Oh, okay. You enjoy that. <laughs> I, yeah, it's fun. Also, his name is George M. Cohen. It's George Michael. I just want everyone to know <laughs> this, that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, his, he was born on the 4th of July. Avs. Mm-hmm. And they're like, let's name him George Washington. They're like, no, that's dumb. And they're like, George Michael. I'm like, I bet he's going to write great music in, yeah. the, <laughs> in like the 1980s. <laughs> so that happens. Um, let's see. Uh, so not much of a plot. Here's what I wrote for Central Conflict. George is an asshole because he's just too talented and nothing happens to him. One time he writes a bad play. What? Yeah. Also, and one time the he tries to get that woman to be in his play, and the woman wants to have the song that he wrote specifically for his future wife, and then he's really sad about that. I was into that scene. Oh, okay. So yeah, he writes this the the Mary song for his lady love Mary, and but he needs to get this really cool ingenue to be in his play, yeah. and she's like that Mary song. I need it. I got to have it. And he goes back. Buying flowers for his ladies, like, I gotta tell her, I don't know how. And she's like, uh, I know, because you bought me flowers, because you're usually the worst person ever. <laughs> she says it in just like with a big smile, like, well, I know, you bought me flowers. Yeah. Even and, though it's kind of implied like that would break her heart, but not. Nah, she's, right. She's and she's like, nice. she's like so beautiful and lovely. She could do much better, as I assume most of these films are. Uh, disagree with there. Have you seen his tap dancing? Oh, it was really good. I actually really enjoyed it. I tap really, dancing. that was probably that was my a, favorite part of the movie. I was absolutely my favorite part of the movie yeah. especially when world war one is happening and he goes down he's like i would like to enlist even though i'm 40 and they're like uh 40 too old and i feel like you knew that and he's like oh yeah oh watch me tap dance losers and they're like whoa get a fucking load of this <laughs> yeah. that was great i like that so the whole thing with him and the Aj- is like this whole theme of the movie if we're gonna get into it is yeah, like what is the theme i would like so to i think the theme is like he wrote real American songs for real Americans, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Here's like the lines, here's some a real line, is that George is the whole darn country squeezed into one pair of pants. What does that even mean? And it, I don't know. Well, so they talk about like, he doesn't do serious plays, he does plays for the common people, Yeah. right? So like, and then, yeah, he writes about ambition, pride, and patriotism, about poor boys becoming rich, the great American dream, hmm. which is a lie. <laughs> Anyway, I don't know. Also, I wrote down, so glad I live in now times, song suck then. <laughs> that I was so that, mean. I think they're that fine. That was really mean. Also, right, there was no Kesha or anything, but yeah. it was pretty good. Oh, so good with some Kesha, though. He didn't die young, uh-huh. so it didn't fit anywhere. Yeah. Oh, they also sang the song Wandering Minstrel Eye in there, and it was just like a group song. And the reason I know that song is 
um, one of the Hitlers tries out with that song in the producers. That's why I know it. I was like, what? That's so familiar. <laughs> Wandering minstrel eye. Next. That's, yeah. Why would I know from a five second scene of the producers? <laughs> yeah, that's. Um... <laughs> that's really odd. But yeah, I, I recognized it instantly. Um, okay, so I guess my biggest complaint about this movie, though, is, like, I don't understand why it belongs in the AFI Top 100. Like, I saw Ben-Hur, and I'm like, shoot me now. I hate this. I like Ben-Hur. I know. I know. <laughs> we disagree. All right. But I get it. Like, I get why. Is it just because it's, like, the most American thing they could find? It's the American Film Institute? Yeah. Like, I don't get it. Oh, yeah, there's this other line. When we get sick of flag waving, a bigger country thinks they can push us around. Apparently that's how we got involved in World War One. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, know your history. Sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, and oh, when he proposed to his wife, here was the exact line. Uh, so she, there was an earlier scene where he was an old man makeup and they meet and she, she thinks he's an old man. It's very funny. And then <laughs> really? later she's like, when you took movie. off that old man beard, <laughs> all I thought was here was a little boy who just needed a lot of looking after. And then he said. Because I'm already grossed out. And then he says, how would you like a lifetime of looking after? And I'm like, grown. I don't <laughs> like really, it. It's really bad. I don't enjoy that. Um, let's see. Oh, I did actually like the scene where they, they where he meets his partner, his writing partner. And it's just like he overhears the partner having conversation with a financier. And he just tricks him into thinking that they're already partners. They know each other and they've already sold a musical. I liked that. I, I thought it was a little fun screwball comedy. It was. Yeah, it was very fun. Absolutely. I, I just want to make a comment. So for anybody who's listening to this podcast and they think they might want to enjoy this movie, it is hard for me. I don't know if it was for you. I can't understand a word anybody says in this movie. Well, I watch a lot of Gilmore Girls, so I'm very familiar <laughs> right. with the fast, fast dialogue. You know like, the fast I'm talking. about it. So I had no problem. There's a scene where uh, George Cohan and his writing partner are going to try to enlist this really famous actress to be in their play. And George Cohen and he's, his character is, oh, I'm super arrogant. I'm so important. He goes, oh, have you ever seen my plays? And she goes, no. And he says the line like, oh, well, have you been away in Europe or were you sick? But the what he actually, the real dialogue was like, oh, been in Europe or been sick? But like so fast where you're like, <laughs> if I didn't have subtitles on, I, how would anybody know what he just said? I don't know. Oh, he said, he said, Ben, Europe or sick? That's exactly what he said. Maybe I did miss that. <laughs> I'm like, how would you know? Luckily, not a lot happened, I guess. Right. That is, I think, a compliment. Maybe they did that on purpose. Um, oh, I also love the scene where he's like old George and he's just retired at his house and some hip young teenagers come up and they're like, hey, you mister, we need some water for our car, which I do not know what that was for. But I guess yeah. they just almost set on fire old cars, maybe. And they're like, oh, who are you supposed to be? He's like, I'm super famous. And they're like, oh, gosh, old pops. I don't know who you are. Let me, let's sing some of our cool music. And then they start singing Jeepers Creepers. Yeah. Like, and Jeepers Creepers. And I'm like, they're like, this is the cool music. Kesha would have been in perfect oh, there. But, Kesha would have But Jeepers it. Creepers is pretty good, too. It's I mean, good, it's a pretty great song, It's got a good guess. bass drop. I do like that. Yeah. Um, did you think it was kind of weird? So he sits down with FDR, terrible actor FDR. And he tells him this super long story. And then at the end of it, FDR's like, oh, here's your Congressional Medal of Honor. And they're like, cool, bye. Like, there's no ceremony? Like, that's a big deal. <laughs> nah, nah. He's all about efficiency. I don't know much about FDR, but I think he was. I guess. But, like, also that's for people who, like, sacrificed the greatest. Like, that's for Forrest Gump, right? Forrest Gump saved, like, 80 people, I think. I don't remember that movie. <laughs> here's the New Deal. We just give you a medal and you just walk out. <laughs> oh, that was a nice New Deal reference. I like that. That was it a fun historical joke. Yeah, it wasn't very smooth. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been smooth if I hadn't just pointed out and, like, beaten that joke to death. Yeah. Here's the New Deal. No ceremonies. Efficiency only. You just, yes, and here's what you just said to me. <laughs> we, both, we both have to work on something. We do have to work on something. <laughs> um, isn't it weird that he wore tap shoes to the White House, but... Okay. No, if you're if you're him, yeah, you're always you just, wearing tap shoes. Except he didn't wear tap shoes when he was you're showing like up Superman all the. You're like Superman wearing your Clark Kent, but uh, Superman's underneath. You're gotcha. always. Okay, here's. So I think that I'm a little brainwashed growing up in America because there was that, that fucking last scene, and he leaves the White House. Are you about to talk bad on America? Because I'm not gonna have that. Uh, just you wait. Okay. okay. Um, it's the greatest country ever. Go on. So I mean, yeah. So he leaves, and there's a parade going on. Because I guess war were, is happening, right? Sure. And, as it does. As it does. And they start singing his song over there. 
and he's like just walking by and he's like don't you know this song old man i don't see you singing he's like you know what i do and i'm like i'm, I'm feeling i really feel, that's in Gaffia. i felt a little something like maybe i do love this country <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. It is a great country. Um, so I would like to uh, put it over and to our other segment where we read. So AFI has decided that this is one of the greatest films that's culturally relevant, blah, blah, blah. Let's hear from the other side of the spectrum and look at one and two star reviews on Amazon. <laughs> For the Yankee Doodle Dandy DVD. For the Yankee Doodle Dandy DVD and streaming. They, all, they put all the reviews together. <laughs> uh all the stuff I've heard about it made this sound like one heck of a fantastic musical. That's why I got it. Don't think that way anymore. Because it's okay. That's really fair. That's yeah. really... That's but fair. I would expect two stars from that. So that was one star? That was one star. Okay. Not anyone's fault but my own. Didn't read it closely. I will keep it and consider a VCR machine. But I really am not a material person. Just like to have what I really like. And a VCR machine for one video? Make it Footlight Parade, and that will make the machine worth it. I love the stream of consciousness. That was yeah, very <laughs> similar to this movie. I did not catch a lot of the substance. I'm not... I may have to read that review later on right. this podcast to get the full meaning. Also, not anyone's fault but my own. Then why did you give it one star? <laughs> like, that was, that was clearly on you. It's residual anger pouring into the star review, yeah. This was the last one. Um, uh, lots of history. Had no idea it was historical. <laughs> and then, Cohan, baby! <laughs> those are really insightful yeah and i know it sounds like i'm doing like an affectation but i promise you it's written that way <laughs> <laughs> go ahead baby go ahead baby was that, was that one review that was one review but it was written in can i just of, hear that whole review again lots of history but i had no idea it was did, historical didn't know it was historical though go ahead I mean, baby a lot of history but historical weird one star <laughs> why <laughs> <laughs> go ahead baby i didn't like it though <laughs> Because I, I didn't like it because I was confused. At I knew there was history. Let me be clear. Let me be fucking clear. I knew there was history. But it was historical? I don't know. I, I don't know. know. I don't know. Come on, baby. Oh, my God. Did it, do you feel like this aged well? Do I feel like it aged? No. But... Um, I feel like it was so indicative of the time that it didn't age well. You got your blackface, you got your fast talking, you got... And also, I feel like there were a lot of pop culture references that we were supposed to, like get as a viewer that I didn't get. No, I mean, it is a period piece. It is about a specific time. It's about a specific person. It's about songs that of a certain era. So, yeah. like, you can easily watch and be like, oh, well, this is just not for our period. It's not a modern movie, clearly. So you can respect it for what it is. Sure. Uh, Mikey, do you know what time it is? What time is it? I think, uh, bam! Time for Sam. Um, <laughs> so this is the segment where we have uh, Samantha in our research department come and tell us a few fun facts. Now, just a little little thing about our Michael and I do not research these films. No. We do not like to be influenced. We because frankly we're very impressionable people. Mm -hmm. So that is why we have brought in a researcher all our own to give us some facts. So Sam, take it away. Uh, so just some generic fun facts about this film. Uh, no, don't get too specific. Okay. Okay. George. Cagney, is that it? Cohen. James, oh. James Cagney. James Cagney is the actor. Okay. George Cohen is who he plays. Sorry. George Cohen chose James Cagney to play him for this film specifically. Oh. Okay. Fred Astaire was asked, but did decline. Why? He is hotter. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, I don't think Fred Astaire is a hottie, but I don't feel like you've looked at James Cagney. Like, he's a weird looking dude, but he can tap really <laughs> well. That's fair. James Cagney was the first actor to win the Best Actor Academy Award for a musical performance. Oh, maybe that's why it's on the end. I top of Which is weird, because I don't know if you've... Have you heard his singing in this movie? Oh, how have we not talked about how bad they're singing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, go It's just very talky. It's very... He's not a singer at all. Over there. Over that's there. Yeah, I just did what you did. Yes, and hear what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, we don't have to explain our process. <laughs> <laughs> just a little behind-the-scenes look. Right. Uh, this was the first film to depict a living president. Ooh. First film. That's a big deal. Uh, and from what I hear, he was not good. He was not good. <laughs> no, I mean, you heard us. Yeah. We, we have, did it. We should have guessed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, since we are doing an AFI film, uh -huh. uh, this film actually has an AFI number 97 movie quote. Do you guys know what it is? What does that mean? Oh, it, they have top 100 movie quotes they do That's and this so has a number 97 in it is it that gross marriage proposal quote that i have 
Uh, let me see. I have some quote notes. Um, watch me tap dance, losers. Nope. Uh, I'm an ordinary guy who knows what ordinary guys like to see. No. I thought that was pretty good. The whole darn country squeezed a new pair of pants. No. Well, it says here. I feel like you don't want me to guess. <laughs> I feel like my that was My mother not. thanks you. My father thanks um, you. My sister thanks you. And I thank you. Number 97. Like, what? That was yeah, a bit. Was that? that was a reoccurring bit. Like, they did that in their vaudeville show. And then when his dad was dying, so he did it. So the point of liking that quote is like, because it's a good movie. And then, and then the congressional honor, he gives it. And he's like, my mother thanks you. My father thanks you. Oh, and then it was okay. like, it's special. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joan Leslie portrayed Mary Cohen mm-hmm. from the ages of Howdy. 18 through 57. She was actually 17 throughout yeah. filming. And they had to take a lot of breaks because of her schooling. Oh. That's nice that they did that. Yeah. I didn't think they cared about stuff like that then. <laughs> uh, just a few more. Cohen was a lifelong ultra conservative, and he did not like Roosevelt at all. Mm, okay. is- In the film, they do say, I'm a Democrat. He, yeah, he says he was a Democrat early, which is like when they did not like black people. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was not a good time to be a Democrat. This was the first film to ever be, uh, first black and white film to ever be colorized. Oh, so. That's probably why it's on the A5. Yeah, this is a fun fact then because, so we're like looking through those Amazon reviews and most of the one star reviews are like, this is not colorized. Why the fuck did they call it? Yeah, they were like real mad. (laughs) It was the first to then be colorized, which was a controversial move at the time. A very controversial move. Who's against color? Who's anti-color? Uh, people who are purists? No, that's a thing. Like, sometimes... I would not want to watch It's a Wonderful Life colorized. Like, it's just because and I... Then you could see more. Oh, shit. I didn't then think about that way. life would feel more wonderful. You'd oh, be more in the movie. And my last fun fact for you guys. Uh, this is John Travolta's favorite film. Of course it is. <laughs> Why? <laughs> he didn't give specifics. It's not Battlefield Earth. It is not. <laughs> what a surprise. He does know it's historical, right? Yeah. <laughs> He was not surprised by that, was I think, that. was the... <laughs> so, All right, well, thank you. Thank Samantha. you so much. And that was Bam. Time for Sam. Nice. nice. All right, should we go to Brokaw? Uh, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. All right, Brokaw. Hello. 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 Oh, hello, siblings. <laughs> it's Brokaw. <laughs> it's Brokaw. <laughs> Br- right on the mic. Do you want to hold it? Yes, I do. Anyway, John, so we were just watching the movie Yankee Doodle Dandy. Have you seen it? Do you know anything about it? Well, I have not seen it, but I do know about it because you guys told me last time and I did a little research. Oh, please tell us about your research. Give us the deets. Well, you know, so it was all about the song about over there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. About the guy, George Cohan, yeah. Well, you know, I care more or less about the guy and more about the song over there, of course. Yeah, we want to know what you care about. Well, you know, so over there became the prototypical American song for World War One. Right. Right. Because they won't come back till it's over over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but, you know, uh, in that era, for some reason, I don't actually know the full answer to this, but a song became identified with uh, the national efforts. So, like, with well, Germany... Weird. Du Wacht am Rhein was the German song that they would always sing, you know, at propaganda rallies and the troops. I love it. American that. troops would sing That's over so there. Cool. We're going over there. All that good stuff. Um, the French would sing the Marseillaise, of course. Oh. Uh, and you know the song the British would sing, of course. No, what? Uh, it's a long way to Tipperary. I don't. I don't can you it. hum it for us? Well, it's, uh, it's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long way to go. I feel because like you're on the that eve of the know. war, that song came out and was at the top of the British charts. And so an Irish division was singing it on the way as part of the British Expeditionary Force. And it became literally the song of the war because all this. the other British units started singing it on their way to battle. I'm having a lot of fun. That's a really fun song. <laughs> um, completely not a war song, but that is one of the defining songs of the entire World War One. It's really cool. Excellent. I have a really weird history question for you, then. Okay. So, in the end of the film, uh, he's the older George Cohen is starring in the film as FDR, or in a play as FDR, and he's singing this song called "That's Off the Record," and he just—it's this whole song about how he doesn't want to tell the reporters anything. Like, there's a line in the song like, "I like Hyde Park because I like to go park and hide there." I've never heard this about FDR. Can you expound on that? Um. 
Not particularly. Yeah, uh, though, the Roosevelt family was very famous for being, um, I mean, because they were literally upper crust New Yorkers. Uh, Hyde Park is even up there in uh, the rich part of New York, you know, where all the people have their summer homes or winter right. homes, or whatever you call it. Um, so he was a very, he was considered to be one of those upper class, behind the closed doors, um, what, what's the words I'm looking for? You know, those. Blue blood. Yeah, sure, let's go with that. Um, really, upper class kid sure, who became sure. governor, who became president. Who was a, he was like really close to death, though. True, true. Though he, he always hid that as well. Right. Although it is, anyway, yeah. Because, uh, because you know, he was never actually pictured uh, while he was president in his wheelchair. And he oh, would yeah. even give speeches propped up. Uh, George Cohan, when he was doing his little FDR bit, he was tap dancing. <laughs> but with the king. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty funny. It was pretty great. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so, yeah. I mean, the whole movie was just like pretty much World War II propaganda. Like, they apparently you they were World filming. World War I propaganda, right? No, no. So they were filming this just normal film about George Cohan, the composer. And then right when they started filming, Pearl Harbor happened. So they rewrote the entire film to just be this love letter to America. Oh, well, that's lovely. Go, yeah, go it's, us. It's a really boring movie. Yeah, how do you feel about tap dancing, John? Oh, you know, I actually, I support tap dancing, tap dancing in all its forms. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, of okay. course, the funny thing is that World War I had such defining songs, and World War II does not, for reasons oh. that actually I don't know. Oh. Well, you know, Nazis, they were known everything. <laughs> That I was going to write true. this great song, but that was Nazis. Yeah, it's right? also partially true that the marching really, I mean, in World War One, you had these large bodies of troops that would march to the front together. Uh, but by the end of World War One and into World War Two, you had the advent of bombers. Oh. Uh, so you couldn't march in so like, massive bodies song. of troops That's really together. What do you need a marching so, song for? It, I, yeah, so let's actually stick with that as a theory, because instead, you now had trucks and bombers. So you actually would just send your troops in the cover of night in trucks during World War II. No marching songs. You just put on a little Metallica while your mom. <laughs> That's probably what Pretty did. much. A little, little Rise of Valkyries. <laughs> They're really going to die young. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I laughed in the mic. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> all right, well, I do have to cut this short because I actually have to get back to over these guys over here. Uh, but oh, who's there? I look forward to the next movie as well. Who's there? Oh, um, would you like to talk to Michelle as well? Sure. Okay. Hey, Michelle, would you like to be part of the bro call? The bro call? <laughs> Hello? How do you feel about tap dancing? Yeah or nay? I feel about what? Tap dancing. Oh, tap dancing. I feel like it is a lost art, and it should stay a little bit lost. Whoa. Do you feel like it's weird that your husband said that he supports tap dancing in all forms? Because I'm pretty sure it's only one form. I would not have expected that from John. That too. How how many forms of tap dancing are, are right. there? Exactly I, one. Yeah. <laughs> There's tap dancing. I guess that is all forms. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Right. I didn't, I didn't know he was such a fan of dancing. No. Even tap dancing. I no. had no idea. None I know he has a big heart underneath all that gruff exterior, but right. But sometimes it's always shocking to see it come out. Right. Hmm. It's true. It's all right. true. We should go because we're we're gonna call back yeah. soon. <laughs> Tell John we're gonna call him again in about an hour. Great. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. I'll we'll talk do. to you guys later. All right. Bye bye. Bye. And that was bro call. That was bro call. <laughs> Was that not? Okay. Uh, would this go on your personal top AFI? No. No. It's not a good film. To it's watch. not it's good. Fun. I, I enjoyed parts of it, but I would I don't recommend this film. I didn't enjoy it. I don't like it. No, I really do. I was into his character. Obviously, he was a dick, and he wasn't likable. And I wasn't, like, rooting for him, and he didn't have a lot of conflict. But, like, when he was, you know, when his dad was dying or when he was having trouble with his wife because he gave away that song, like, I did feel something. I would watch this 15-minute film. Yes. That's yes. how I feel. I, I want to just watch... James Cagney and then dance. Just put the rest of the songs in my iPod and rock out to him. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, so you did not like this film. I also did not. Um, was... But also, I just wouldn't put it on my personal AFI because I don't get it. Like, someone needs to explain to me why it's so important. Oh, uh, we have this just coming in from research. Yes, Samantha. Uh, it was put into the. You got to come over here, man. Oh, this isn't actually interesting. Sorry. You did ask me. You can wait now. I just had to turn the mic. Okay. Uh, You did ask me why it was. Yeah, I don't get it. The AFI list. 
I don't have that information. It's not a well-known why they picked those lists. It's all by polling. However, yeah. uh, the United States National Film Registry did uh, elect it in by the library, or put it into the Library of Congress as being culturally historic and aesthetically significant. Okay. I mean, maybe it was. Like, maybe I don't have enough knowledge of film history to know why it was so good. But. Pause, 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 resume. Okay. Yeah, I just, I, I guess... There's something that I don't get about it, but I don't I don't see its influence in other film. Yeah, I don't get it. Uh, what grade do you give it? Um, I give it a solid D. I'll, I'll give it a C minus. You know, because you do watch it and you do understand. It's not, you know, it's not for our time. I guess. But and, um, the performances are good. The tap dancing was really, really good. And I wasn't super into the songs, as I expressed eloquently in Michael's Corner. But, you know, I mean, it was sang well. I felt like... I thought you did not like the singing. No, I like this. I didn't like George Cohan singing. Oh, okay. But I like everyone else's singing. You know, and I actually, now that we're talking about the songs, and I was talking earlier about how some of them were really catchy, but actually, I didn't like most of the songs. No, me neither. Like the weird racing song or the weird Hannigan song. Like, I wasn't into it. Yeah, no. Again, it's no, uh, no Kesha. No, no Kesha. No. I like that that is our go to. Yeah. So. Yeah, don't watch Yankee Doodle Dandy. That is a recommendation. Yeah. Can you guys thank you, sponsors? Oh, shit. Uh, brought to you by Squarespace. <laughs> Build beautiful websites. Easily. Don't even think about it. Just have it. Just think it. Go to squarespace.com. Uh, close your eyes. Hammer out on the keyboard. You have a website. It is perfect for your brand. Uh, you'll love it. Also brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Mm-hmm. Put in coupon code. Sibling screenings. The best podcast. Number one on iTunes. Steve Jobs likes it the best. Uh, he would have. But he's super dead. But he's super dead. That's all one word. That's all one word. <laughs> there are dashes in between some of the words. That's up for you to figure out. Go to that site and yeah, yeah. get a great discount. On, great discount. I don't know what service they provide. Uh, they, uh, uh, if you are looking to hire someone, is what they do. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what they do. I'm gonna take your word for it, but uh, I mean, they do a great job. Actually, I'll, our go to the website. You figure it out for yourself. <laughs> you you under just Bing it. Just use Bing. Bing. You got it. Bing. Also brought to you by Microsoft. <laughs> brought to you by the best. Bing. It's such a good company. Such a great I love company. The Xbox. Anyway. I'm just always like, guys, if you want to know all the information, just bing it. Just bing it. <laughs> That's what we all say. It's a common vernacular. Can we just bing out? They, that doesn't really make sense, but people get the vibe. People of it. get it. Yeah. It's just about a feeling. All right. People are just too high stress. Anyway, uh, uh, let's. let's do we, should we do our clothes off again? or? How do, uh, <laughs> what's our. Uh, That's it for sibling screening. What if we had a. I'm Colleen Flair. I'm Michael. Oh. That's Sibling Screening. I'm Colleen. I'm Michael. And that's it. For Sibling Screenings. I like that.